what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at an absolutely amazing micro PC from Minis Forum. You heard that right I said micro instead of mini because this thing is super duper tiny. This is known as the Minis Forum EM680 and keep in mind that they do have the EM780 coming and you know if you're familiar with kind of the monikers they place on these mini PCs you got a good idea of what CPU we have here. But as you can see, this is definitely a micro PC. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, RDNA 2 graphics, and yeah, I mean, this thing packs a punch given its form factor. I'm really surprised by how well this thing performs. If you do end up getting one of these, just note that inside of the box, obviously, you'll get the micro PC. We've also got a 65 watt PD fast charger, it's USB type C, and an HDMI cable. And just to drive it home here, I wanted to give you a size comparison between my Xbox Elite 2 controller and this micro PC, the EM680. It's really amazing how compact they were able to get this system and still perform like it does. Now, uh, when it comes to I.O., they have left a few things out. We do not have Ethernet with this, but up front, they have left us with a 3.5mm audio jack and USB 4. This will support power in and video out, so you can actually use this in single cable operation mode, and I will demonstrate this in a second. But over here on the right hand side, we've got a micro SD card slot, one full size USB 3.2 port, and around back, we've got a full size HDMI port, two more 3.2 ports, and another USB 4 port. So in total, we can do three displays out of this micro PC, and they will do 4K 60. It also has Wi Fi 6 and Bluetooth built in, so if you're worried about not having an Ethernet port, I mean, that kind of does make up for it a little bit, but you could always connect an adapter if you needed it. One thing I mentioned was single cable operation mode, and basically what this does is allow you to plug in one cable. I've got a monitor here that supports PD fast charging out. It does up to 65 watts with this one here and video in. So all I need to do is plug one cable in to one of those USB 4 ports, boot the unit up. Now my monitor's sending power, and we're sending that video signal back to the monitor itself. And we can do 4K60 given the APU they're using here, and you know, we could do 4K60 with three displays connected to this micro PC if you needed it. Now when it comes to the specs of the EM680, for the CPU we've got the Ryzen 7 6800U and it'll run it up to 35 watts in this micro. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads with a boost up to 4.7 GHz. A built-in Radeon 680M iGPU, 12 CUs based on RDNA 2 and it'll clock up to 2200 MHz. The unit I have here has 16 GB of RAM and it is soldered to the board. It's non-user upgradable, there's just not enough room in here for SODIMM slots. So they utilized LPDDR5, but this is actually awesome because we're working with 6400 mega transfers per second instead of something like 4800 that we've seen in other. It uses a 2230 M.2 PCIe 4.0 SSD. We've also got that micro SD card slot, Wi-Fi 6, and this is running Windows 11 out of the box, but you could install Linux on it if you want to. And if the interest is there, we could install SteamOS and see how this thing performs. Just let me know in the comments below. Okay, so first things first, I've been using this little PC for two days as making this video. I am super impressed with the size versus the performance this thing's putting out. Remember, we've got that 6800U, 8 cores, 16 threads. When it comes to RAM, we've got that 16 gigs running at 6400 MHz, which is a lot faster than the other mini PCs that have the 6800U, because those usually utilize SODIMM RAM, and that's running at around 4800 MHz. So we've got much faster RAM here, which is really going to help out with that iGPU. And speaking of the iGPU, from the BIOS, we can actually set this up to 8 gigs if we wanted to. But I've got it set to auto because I've noticed that with some games, when I go to do the shader cache in the beginning, for instance, Hogwarts Legacy, if I've got it set to even 2 gigs, it will not compile those shaders before we start the game. But when it's set to auto, it will. Little odd, not sure if it's the game itself. I've also noticed this with some other stuff. But this thing is awesome given the form factor. Going into the BIOS, we can mess around with the SMU options, which will allow us to kind of adjust the TDP to our liking. But I'm sitting at the stock configuration, and this does boost up to around 38 watts every once in a while. From uh, CPU-Z, if I run a stress test, you can see right here, right there, up 33, 35, and I've seen it boost up to around 38. This thing also stays pretty cool, and it's not that loud. I thought we'd be pumping out a lot of air and a lot of sound, given, you know, how small that fan is but it's very manageable. It's not whining or anything like that. And of course, with the 6800U, running it at higher wattages would definitely help out with performance. But we also got to keep in mind that, you know, we're kind of limited by the size of this thing. But 35 watts, I think is perfect for this mini PC. Web browsing, very snappy. 
head over to the Menace Forums website here. Everything populates very quickly, and if we scroll on down, you'll see everything's ready to go. All these images, uh, there's also some videos on this page here. But yeah, I mean, web browsing, really nice, and we know with the 6800U, we've got more than enough power to use it just as your basic desktop PC. Web browsing, email checking, document editing, even some photo editing is possible. But the next thing I wanted to take a look at was some 4K video playback from YouTube. And we'll just go ahead and find one of these uh, 4K demo videos I usually test. Make sure we're at 4K. Go ahead and restart this. Let's go 4K. We'll do full screen. Stats for nerds. And this is going to handle 4K 60 HDR like a champ. I mean, it'll go through this whole video here without any drop frames at all. Got stats for nerds up in the top left hand corner. You see we've got zero drop frames and it's just going to go on and go on without any of them dropping here. I've had amazing luck with these 6000 series Ryzen APUs and 4K video playback, but I haven't tested three displays running at 4K 60 at the same time. But I mean, the way it is, if you needed to do 4K video playback from your favorite streaming app like Netflix, YouTube, HBO, or even local storage like an SD card, internal storage, or an external hard drive, just know, I mean, the 6800U has more than enough power for 4K 60. But one of the main things that I wanted to check out with this micro PC was just PC gaming in general. Having something this small that can do some newer AAA games, uh, even at 720, 60 FPS, is pretty impressive. And this thing does it. First up, Street Fighter VI low settings, and we're at 720p, but it's being upscaled using RSR to 1080. If you're not familiar with RSR, it's Radeon Super Resolution. It does work on these RDNA 2 iGPUs. It would have been really nice if I could have went up to medium with this one, but unfortunately we're right at around 55 on average, and you definitely want to play these fighting games at a steady 60. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, still using RSR, so basically the PC thinks we're at 720p, it's being upscaled to 1080, all low settings, and we're getting an average of 74 FPS. With the newly updated Radeon drivers and updates from CD Projekt Red to Cyberpunk 2077, these APUs can actually handle this game way better than I ever thought they would. You know I had to throw this one in. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings. We're getting an average of 87 FPS. This is just one of those games that works on basically any system you throw it at. This is very, very playable in my opinion. And we're at a true 1080, not using RSR here. I've just had really good luck with this game on iGPUs. Even some of the Intel XE systems can actually run this over 60 medium settings, 1080p. Awesome performance, and I wouldn't mind playing like this all day long. And if you take a look at Afterburner, at the very bottom, we've got the TDP. We're right under 30, so this is at around 28 watts on average. And the temps aren't that bad either. I've seen it go up to around 81 degrees Celsius, which isn't close to thermal throttle. That's sitting at around 95 from the BIOS, but, you know, uh, when it hits that, it's going to just underclock everything. But with the way they have this set up, it works great at this wattage. And the final one I wanted to test here was Spider-Man Miles Morales. 720p, low. This is one of those games, it's really hit or miss still on these APUs. Sometimes you'll boot it up, runs great, sometimes it falls right on its face. It's kind of the luck of the draw. I don't know exactly what's going on with this, but uh, right now we're over 60. On average, we got 63, but you'll see those dips go under 60 every once in a while. Another thing I wanted to test out here was just total system power consumption given the form factor and it does a really great job. So while I'm doing all of my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter. So this is total from the wall. At idle, pulls around 8 watts. Average gaming, 39. And the maximum that I could get this to pull in an extreme test was 46 watts.
Remember, the TDP on this APU is set at 35 watt, and it comes with a 65 watt power supply, so we're underneath all of that, and we're good with this thing. I mean, it's definitely an awesome performer, given the form factor, and it's not pulling that much power. Definitely more than some of the other mini PCs out there, but we're working with a lot more performance. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Loving this thing. Cannot wait to get my hands on the EM780. And you know, since this was called the EM680 and we've got that 6800U, just take a guess on what the 780 is going to be powered by because yeah, we're going to be looking at a really powerful Ryzen 7000 series micro PC with that one. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description. And if you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, like different games, emulators, or other operating systems like SteamOS, let me know down below. But like always, thanks for watching.